Welcome to the Ask Dr. Mom Show, episode 14. In today's episode, we discuss eczema, animal bites, and whether or not to obtain a tetanus shot, and teething pain. You don't need to be afraid. You can handle this, and here's how you do it. The Ask Dr. Mom Show. Welcome to the Ask Dr. Mom Show, episode 14. Now, episode 14, I am not superstitious, but, but I think it is a little suspect. That 13 was That so 13 rough. was so insane. Getting filmed. <laughs> Here, that's right. We're on episode 14. We set the day. Mm -hmm. We set the time. Here we are. No hitches. Yeah, it was it's beautiful. But trying to film episode 13, we rescheduled that how many times? Three times. And then filmed at the last second on Friday when the show should have been released. It was great. <laughs> so just say, it's a little <laughs> suspect. <laughs> okay, what is our first question? Our first question is from Krista DeWalt. Hello, Dr. Mom. I really appreciate your show and all the information you share to help us. I have a question for you. My one daughter suffers from eczema. What are some ways you suggest to treat or heal her of this? I do monitor processed foods, sugar, etc. that she consumes. Thank you so much, Krista. You know, Krista, one of the most effective things that I have found, even when you're dealing with a really young infant, mm -hmm. is quite often the reason that they have eczema is because there is just not enough of the right types of fats in their mm -hmm. diet. They're not getting enough of the omega-3, 6s, 9s. And so I have found that if you have a bottle or if they're old enough for a smoothie, just adding some flax oil, even once a day, usually will get enough fats in the diet that you will see the eczema just clear up. Um, now, how much do you recommend? Like if they're putting it in a smoothie, are you talking a teaspoon, a well, tablespoon? Well, depending on the age. You know, okay. for infants, usually something like a teaspoon okay. is plenty. If we're up talking about a toddler, mm -hmm. then I might go to a half a tablespoon. Mm -hmm. And to start out with, I might do it a couple times a day. You can tell when they're getting too much if their bowel movements start getting oily. Yeah, or too soft. Yeah, okay. if they're getting too yeah. soft, then you need to back up a little bit and maybe just do it once a day. And once you get it under control, you may do it once every other day. Right, once the body gets at like a baseline level. It's right. not going to need as much to maintain. Absolutely, but this has been... This is what I have found to be the most effective, mm -hmm. is just treating it internally. And we were discussing earlier that oh, yeah. topically... Yeah, I found bentonite clay, so topically works really well, mixed with um, like a shea butter or an oil, like if you were going to make your own lotion or if you do right. lotion bars or anything like that. To mix so the mix bentonite. it with maybe some olive oil or mm -hmm. coconut oil or something like that. Yeah, I've had good success with that. And because I think sometimes people ask a question like in this example, eczema, um, you could have eczema for multiple different reasons. So Absolutely. it's hard to know how to treat it. Um, I'm body. glad you brought that up because the very worst case of eczema I ever saw was actually caused by what you're talking about. Mm. I had a mother show up on my doorstep with this six-week-old infant covered from head to toe in the worst eczema I had ever seen. And even at that young age, he was literally going like this, clawing at himself because he was so miserable. She had gone to a couple of different dermatologists, mm -hmm. and all they could offer was steroid creams, which yeah. wasn't helping. And so she was on my doorstep wanting to know what to do with this infant. She brought him in. As we got talking, it came out that she had attended a seminar I had given uh -huh. where I was talking about cleansing and nourishing. Oh. 
and she this, started cleansing. She did. This baby, oh, no. she had adopted this baby at birth, but this baby came from a mother who used drugs. Yeah. So when she adopted her, she immediately started giving him teas and things to flush his liver. Yeah. And, and it was coming out. That's right. And as soon as she told me that, it clicked and I knew immediately what was going on. And so we had to have a discussion on how when we cleanse and we nourish, we have to keep the scale balanced, yeah. especially with a newborn. Yeah. And so then I had to kind of walk her through it and say, okay, if he has all of these toxic drugs in his liver mm -hmm. and you're detoxing that liver, what's going to happen? These toxins are poisons. Yeah. And now we're dumping the liver. His poor little body couldn't yeah. eliminate so him fast yeah. enough. And so it, it was literally f pushing it out through the skin to protect the vital organs. And so in his case, all we had to do was stop the cleansing. Yeah. And then with him, I actually had her soak him in noni juice. Oh yeah. Which Very is what powerful. yeah, which was what was able to dry out. Soothe and, and clear his up. But you're absolutely right. There can be other things that are causing it. And so the bentonite clay is a wonderful thing to use topically, yeah. flax oil internally. And I've taken bentonite clay internally too, like mixed with juice. You can yes. take like a teaspoon. It'll bind free radicals, heavy metals, stuff like that to it. Yeah. And just and, and help flush and, it out. Yeah. So this would this would be a wonderful way, especially if it's really bad right now. This would be a wonderful way for you to be able to treat it topically and also internally. Okay, what do we have for question number two? Yolandi asks. Hello, I hope I could get some advice. My sister didn't think this through, but decided to catch a squirrel with her bare hands. Needless to say, it bit her. I have not dealt with a situation like this before, and I am unsure of what to do. Would you recommend that she gets a tetanus shot, or is there something we can do naturally? I reacted by making a topical paste, which included activated charcoal, baking soda, cayenne, echinacea, and golden seal tincture drops mixed with coconut oil. Before she came to me, she soaked her finger in whiskey and I cleaned it with rubbing alcohol before applying the paste and bandaged it. Internally, I gave her some echinacea golden seal tincture and a cayenne pill. What would you recommend? I thank you so much. Yolandi, I think what you did was brilliant. Absolutely great thinking. Activated charcoal is known for absorbing poisons. So I think what you did was wonderful. The only thing that I would add to what you have already done is I would have probably used a, um, a black ointment, a drawing salve, so that once you've got it clean and disinfected, then you can keep drawing those poisons out. It's just a little more powerful than the coconut oil um, in fact, in our replenished tissue formula, we have coconut oil mixed with the pine tar mm -hmm. to help with that drawing action. Now, as far as the tetanus shot goes, let me share some of my own personal experiences and then we'll talk about the immunization a little bit. First off, you have to remember that tetanus is associated with dirty barnyards and old rusty nails, mm -hmm. manure, all of that kind of stuff. So when we're dealing with something like a squirrel that lives in a tree and eats nuts and berries, and yeah. I don't think I'd be real concerned that they have been in an environment that would carry tents. That would be my own personal feeling. Our family has actually done a lot of animal rescues so we have dealt with raccoons, fox, wolves, squirrels, <laughs> birds. <laughs> I love your animal stories. They're <laughs> hilarious. Lots of different animals. And, and I've been bitten by most of them. And I never went and got a tetanus shot. No. Nor had my children. The only time that I did was I was at a dog park one time, got bitten by a pit bull mm. 
and it immediately just turned ugly and inflamed and and really something nasty. Something was seriously wrong. Yeah, something was seriously wrong, and my daughter had a dream that I was rushed to an ER and died. <laughs> <laughs> so because of this whole combination, right. well, there's a time and place. <clears throat> right. For, uh, I did end up going down, and like I said, I had them isolate just the tetanus and give yeah. me the tetanus vaccine. Now, having said that, with a dog, especially one you don't know, who could have been chewing on carcasses and that's, that's been true. in really filthy situations, um, that one and only time I did go down and get that tetanus. But you have, in order for it to be effective, Mm -hmm. They say you have to get it within 72 hours of the bite. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how long it's been since the squirrel bite. But it has to be done within 72 hours. Mm -hmm. And like we were discussing a few minutes ago, there is a certain length of time before your body even starts, starts. producing antibodies. Yeah. And by the time it starts producing the antibodies, the tetanus could have killed you. Yeah. True. So this is something you really have to decide for yourself, weigh out all the pros and cons. Weren't you telling me that it takes like seven days for the antibodies to... Yeah, yeah, that's what, that's my understanding, um, is that after you get the shot, it takes seven days for the antibodies to, um, to for your body to start... To produce those to produce antibodies, them. and the tetanus could kill you in six days. Right, right. So, so if if a lot of people are concerned with lockjaw, and you'll start right. seeing symptoms from lockjaw because that's that's the aspect of tetanus that can kill you is the lockjaw, and you'll start seeing those symptoms within 24 hours. And so if if the lockjaw having to do with the tetanus is an issue, um, the tetanus shot isn't isn't going to help you. Right, and and it's been so my under consider. It's <laughs> my understanding that historically. When you do have the symptoms of lockjaw start kicking in, mm -hmm. if you use a lobelia tincture, oh, wow. it will actually neutralize and counteract yeah. that. Yeah. So again, as far as the tetanus goes, that's something you have to weigh out for yourself. But in my personal experience, most of the time, I've dealt with a lot of animals, scratches, bites, and and things that have been wild, and it's not something I've ever had a concern about. I think. A lot of times in situations like this where if we sometimes we have a reaction of being in a place of fear about what could happen and if exactly. we just calm down and kind of center ourselves we and say okay what what do we need in this situation what's the best thing to do and then you can make that decision I, I think you were probably in that calm centered place when you said okay I think it's best for me to go get a shot this time and, right and the other times you went that, you know, that's not no, really what we need. Yeah. And and actually, what you did was perfect. She got it clean. She started drawing and getting it stabilized. So I think, I think what you did was perfect. Okay, so, what's our last question? Susan asks, Dr. Mom, my 10-month-old is having terrible teething pain. Do you have a recipe or teething gel drops you used with your kids? Have a great day. You know, this teething pain can be miserable. One of the things that I have used in the past is horsetail tincture mm -hmm. because calcium is a natural pain reliever mm -hmm. and horsetail is known for the precursors for calcium. And so I have taken horsetail tincture and just rubbed it right on the gums. We have done things like putting a banana in the freezer and mm -hmm. freezing it so that they can chew on the frozen banana. I have used teething homeopathics yeah. in the past to, to help with teething pain. Putting a spoon in the refrigerator and getting it cold mm -hmm. so they can chew on the spoon. Cold is your friend. Right. Anything that helps take the inflammation out of the gums is going to be helpful. And so another thing that would help is making a tea out of rose hips. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of natural anti-inflammatory properties, and it's extremely high in vitamin C. Right. So making a tea out of rose hips, rubbing that on the gums, 
a lot of parents swear by chamomile tea oh. because it's very soothing and calming. So any of those types of things where they can gnaw on something cold or you can use the teas or the horsetail directly to the gums, I think all of those things are beneficial. Have you ever used diluted clove oil to help because it has a numbing effect? I've used clove oil on mm -hmm. older children and adults. I've never tried it on an infant, but it does have natural properties that are numbing. Right. I've done it with one of my children in particular. It seems to have much more severe teething pain. Right. Um, and so I diluted it like 10 to 1. So it was very diluted. And so what were you diluting it in? A uh, fractionated coconut oil. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I dilute, so quite a bit, ten, a 10 to 1 ratio. And then if, when he was in a really, really bad spot, that's, that's what I would do. But it's still, it's still a hot oil diluted. And so you want to try to just get it on their gums and it might upset them for the first minute afterwards. But you know, when you're in that place where they're not sleeping and right. you don't want to be up all night, that's when I've used clove oil. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a wonderful solution because yeah. it does have natural numbing yeah. properties in it. So. All right, we are out of time for today. Thank you so much for joining us. This has been the Ask Dr. Mom Show. I'm Sandra Ellis with Alicia Decker. <laughs>